So our next speaker, without a doubt, personifies the whole aspect of cool. I go, what makes you cool? And she goes, I like lasers. I like lasers. I mean, that's like the first best line of a date, isn't it? So I like lasers, and get, she, her job is basically she gets to play and have her friends hang out with her while she's playing. It reminds me of the movie Big, you know, when he was a little kid. It's the same aspect. Patty, she might go by Patricia on the side here, but Patty is really going to take us to a whole new level of what's going on with virtual reality, AR, lasers, and uh, I found out you're a burner. So um, let's welcome a film, uh, Burning Man, Laser Freak. Come on up here, Patty. All right. Um, I do. I should be mic'd. All right. And I'm actually, this presentation starting with uh, Richard Steinau. He's a vice president of AV Concepts. So we're going to kick it off with him, and then I'll go ahead and join after that. What makes uh, oh, Richard, Richard cool? He says he's so uncool that it's cool. <laughs> That's what he says. I have five kids from 25 to 3, and I define not cool. They tell me on a daily basis. So <laughs> what I want to do for you is help you understand where holography is going and what we've done to apply it. So a little story. In June of 2009, we went to an industry conference and decided we would launch this Musion technology in the US to our peer group and our client set. And we decided it would be kind of fun to try and highlight it in a unique way. And we created actually a seminal event. And that was that during that event in Orlando, Florida, a singer live from a stage in London appeared live on stage in Orlando and sang a duet. A live person on a holograph together performing. High def technology in terms of projection, the, the uh, codex that was used, all of the technology has now come together that I can put anyone, anywhere, anytime with technology. If you look at the virtual choir, which was uh, just amazing to me, I sat in my seat, was blown away. Imagine if we could take 10 or 12 of those people from all over the world and put them on the same stage performing together. That's the technology that we possess today. And that's the fun of AV Concepts. We started out fairly humbly as just another AV tech staging company with a piece that doesn't work. Mark. It's all about Mark. And what, what we found was that some of the experience we had with some of our larger clients was driving us to do something differently. And if I can make this work, I'll tell you the whole story. Fantastic. So AV Concepts essentially is a company that produces huge corporate events and small intimate events. If you're familiar with all things digital, we've produced that now for seven years for them. It's a great event, we love it, and every year we're amazed by what comes out of it. We just finished a few week weeks ago doing Oracle Open World. 40,000 people in 11 venues over five days with 2,500 meetings, every one of them produced by our team. That's the core of what we've done. And it's pretty basic, it's what you see. It's the stage here, it's projection, it's lights, it's sound, and it's great. And we have a pretty good time doing it. But to be honest, our industry has lost a lot of fun. Because while Bono's on the stage, it's just another stage for us, guys. It's just another thing. And there's a bigger struggle in our industry, and that's every time you do a really impressive event, the first thing your client will say to you is, what are you going to do next year? Or what are you going to do for the next event? And so we have been on this path to try and find that next thing. One of the things that's gotten a lot of interest is texture mapping. This is simply a 10K projector with a Mac tower outside of our offices in San Diego and a couple of guys for about four hours that decided to map the building. There is no lighting. There's no effect added to it. You can see from the great camera work as it jiggles around that it's just a live feed of what was done in four hours. But one piece that we did involved flames. I would not recommend that in a public space because <laughs> when the fire department showed up, they don't really care that we were faking it because the call to them was real. And that's what we've been able to bring forward. And that's the technologies that AV Concepts is bringing now to our client set. But it's really starting to be, get weird for us because this holography thing has become a really big deal, but also a really difficult deal. So let me give you an example of where it's a big deal. Pharmaceutical company gathers 700 of their pharmaceutical reps together. They have a drug that's not real popular, doesn't make the reps a lot of money, but through social responsibility, they want to push the drug. And they come to us and say, what do we do? How do we do this different? Because 700 hardened pharmaceutical reps are one of the worst audiences you're ever going to find. They've seen it all. They've done it all. Another conference does not excite them in any way. They used this technology. And what they were able to do at the end of the conference in three days, they, brought it, they talked about this and how they wanted to help change the world. And they wanted the reps to support this drug more, not because they would make money, but because it was the right thing to do. 
and palpably from the audience you could feel, yeah, whatever. And they said, well, you don't seem to be listening to us, the executives of the company. Let us share a story with you. And next on the stage teleports in Star Trek style a doctor from a hospital in the Northeast. And he spends three minutes telling the story of how this drug has transformed a teenager from a kid who was basically on a road to disaster to a child today that's got a future. And he implored them to take more time. And then he said, but don't let me tell you. Let me, let me have someone who really knows the story better than me tell you. He disappears and on teleports her mother. And she tells the story of the change in her daughter. And as you look at this audience, these hardened pharmaceutical reps, they're starting to shift in their seats. They're having a hard time because this is very emotional. And because it's holographic, it feels like she's there and they've never seen anything like it. They've now engaged this thing to a level that they're not used to. It's not a screen that we've all seen. They're, while their mind for about the first minute tried to wrestle with how did he just do that, now they're embedded in the story and she's there and she's with them. And she tells the story of how this drug saved her daughter. And then when she leaves, teleport, we teleport in her daughter and she tells her story with tears. It melts these people down. They're a mess. It's fantastic. <laughs> and so as she concludes her piece, they teleport her out. The executive comes out and says, do you get it now? Do you understand now? And he says, well, let me introduce. And from stage left comes that girl live. 700 people shoot to their feet, bawling like crazy, clapping their hands. They've had an experience they've never had before. Here's the struggle with that. When we finish talking about what is it and the big questions that we always get, especially the cost issue, which is actually pretty reasonable for an installation, in the end, the biggest problem we have is the limitations. We would love to bring it here and show it to you, but I need about 20 feet of space off the stage, another 10 feet after that for uh, an area of pit that we need to build. It doesn't fit everywhere. It takes some applications. And what we were finding, what our clients were saying, is we love the idea of it. We don't know how to apply it. So can you teach us how? And we said, no, we don't have a clue. We can't do that. We do equipment. We do screens. We do all these things. And they said, we'd love to use it. And we found ourselves in that space where there was this great idea, but no way to apply it. And even with the best people in our company, we couldn't come up with solutions. We were working with the top production companies and creative agencies in the world. All the Fortune 1000 companies at one time or another have seen this, and they want it. And we realized we've got to figure out how to do this. And so we elected to go into an area and bring people on our team that understood who could translate the creative and the technical into the application. And we accidentally invented something that is incredibly powerful. Because in the end, it's the how that is the great value that AV Concepts now provides to its clients. We still do the projectors, the screen, we do it well. But it's that connection point between great concepts and application that all of a sudden becomes so important. So then we said, okay, who wants to hear the message? And we realized with 23 years of experience doing 500 events a year, we knew every Fortune 1000 company somewhere, somehow, and we started reaching out to them. And the response was overwhelming because they saw this opportunity to take a concept and put it into an application when Intel did its latest launch of a chip and they brought in all the chief marketing officers and high-level people from Dell and all these other places, they used this technology, a live presenter on stage as the, as the material flew past him and the audience was wowed. And when it was done, the 60 key people that were invited rushed the stage, not to talk to the presenter, but to talk to our tech. How did we do that? How do we get that? And that's the beauty of what this technology is doing for us because in the end, it allows us to bring it to market in a way that no one else has the ability to do and become an expert at trying to offer an application. The things we're doing now, this is a studio in San Diego, it's the most advanced fusion theater in the world. It allows us to do things with content and to play with new technologies every day. And I'm gonna turn it over to Patty because in the end I'm not cool but she is and she can share with you a lot more about what we're doing to move this thing forward because the Musion holographic device has become the most fundamental change in our industry and I believe what you'll see going forward that, that I've ever been associated with. Patty? All right, so I know we got less than five minutes. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, so the first time I saw Musion, it was with Madonna and the Gorillas, and I was blown away. And uh, at that time, I was working in fully immersive virtual reality, the cave, you know, and everybody's heard about the Star Cave, you know, Circa, Cal IT2, they're all involved with that. Top immersive systems in the world. Um, then I started working with really high-end, large-scale events. So Shanghai World Expo, Vancouver Olympic Games, talking virtual configurators with ESPN. And I really thought I had seen everything. I mean, down to like virtual reality contact lenses and prototypes. And it takes a lot 
now to you know get me really engaged in this because I've been fortunate enough to work with these amazing people and these amazing teams. So when the first time I saw the Musion Holographic stage, I was blown away because this was everything that everybody had asked for. How could we make this at a very large scale? And the thing that got me about it was the sense of presence. Obviously, you have a platform that is able to incorporate different information spaces in a seamless way. But beyond that, increasing the sense of presence really is approximating virtual reality without the glasses. So when you have your uh, peripheral and your foveal vision working together, and, and that that's what the Musion Holographic stage does, it engages your full visual perception, you're able to create a sense of transformation. So I'm getting a little excited because in pushing the limits of the system, which is really what I was hired to do, I'm thinking about the old experiential way of things. It, it, all the production companies are, we want to be experiential. Everybody wants to be experiential, but it seems that that was the way of the past. Now it's really about transforming the space and engaging the audiences and knowing where they're coming psychologically, the cognitive science behind that. So what we have is um, the integration of mixed reality and virtual worlds onto the holographic stage. Yes, I am a burner. And this is a concept that started being out at Burning Man. I'm hanging out in first camp, talking to the media mecca and a couple of the CEOs that go out there and mingle. And we're like, well, wouldn't it be cool if we had Eric from Google up on the stage as a holographic presenter? And then we got real life presenters. And on top of that, we have the virtual world coming in. And so that led us to do this kind of R&D. I come back and I'm talking to Richard and I'm like, let's just put it on, in the back screen. Because not only do you have the front foil, now you have the depth. So we started playing with that concept, live action to avatar, and that led me to the future of integration. This is why I'm here, to integrate and to invite all of you to play with us. Because here we have uh, the what if, the imagine if we could run an NVIDIA Tesla engine on the back end of the Musion holographic stage. This is a supercomputer, and this is me geeking out and thinking, OK, then what would I do next? And I can run all of these programs, and then maybe I could actually do some biomorphic feedback. Because ideally, what I'd like to do is do some Jedi mind, you know, the brain computer interface, and I think about it, and the whole thing turns on, and voila, you know, then there goes my presentation. So um, I thought about the idea of incorporating eye tracking so that we can start monitor monitoring the, um, the feelings and the emotions of the people and how they're actually interacting with the demo in the Musion stage. So having that kind of supercomputer uh, running on the back end allows us to run all of these multiple applications seamlessly and to create the biomorphic feedback needed. So that if we go to a client and we say, why are you spending a million dollars? Let's just say, you know, world, World's Fair. Um, it's because that we can actually provide you with results of, um, sorry, one minute, of, uh, okay, so we're going to give you this hardware. This is your interface. These are your emotional profiles. And so in that sense, we are really reaching the holy grail of computing is to be able to interface human design with computer design. And um, here we have somebody that just came to visit us and, you know, wanted to play. And so you have Iron Man and um, obviously, you know, our friend James, and they're doing some testing on the stage. I've invited Franklin London, two-time Academy Award-winning animator, to come play. And that's the way we treat it. It's like when you go when you're a kid and you used to knock on your neighbor's doors and say, hey, can my friend come out and play? Let's drop all business aside. I invite all of you to come hang out. If it's a weekend, if it's after hours, I want you to come and test your systems, test your you know, animations, and let's see what we can create together. Thank you.